Hi, my name is Larissa Ramsey. I'm a bioinformatician with the BET Lab in the Department of Plant Sciences at the University of Saskatchewan in Saskatoon. My talk is Bridging the Gap, Using Long Reads to Enable More Contiguous Assembly of Repeat-Rich Plant Genomes. Now, when I'm saying repeat-rich plant genomes, the example that I'm going to be talking about in this case is the lens genus, which includes cultivated lentil, lens culinaris. All species within the genus have seven chromosomes and a relatively large genome, around three to four gigabases with high repeat content. Beyond sequencing just lentil, we're interested in the rest of the species within the genus for their utility within the breeding program. Wild relatives are a source of new variation, including disease resistance trait, but not all crosses are viable. By sequencing at least one variety from within each species, we hope to identify structural differences that may contribute to the viability of these hybrids and hopefully get insight into evolution within the lens genus and the domestication of cultivated lentil. Back in 2009, we began sequencing lens culinaris as part of the LensGen project with the short read technologies that were available at the time. We had a variety of short read data, uh, chromosome flow sorting information, GBS consensus genetic map based on three different populations, skim sequencing map, optical map, but in the end we were only able to assemble 2.7 gigabases of sequence, which was highly fragmented with a scaffold N50 of 54 KB, and only 1.1 gigabases of that was anchored into pseudomolecules. We had assembled the genes, we're fairly confident, but there were a lot of issues with the fine ordering, as well as persistent issues with the repetitive content, uh, as shown in the later alignment of long reads to the earlier assemblies. You can see that on the side. Uh, we had a, clearly had a lot of collapsed repeats because of these massive pileups of the long read data into those repetitive sections relative to the coverage in the rest of the areas. Uh, however, last year we got a gridion in the lab and thanks to our collaborators we had a number of additional minion runs as well, all done in order to bring us up to 50-fold coverage of genome in reads that were greater than 5 kb in length. Uh, so this brings us to our 2.0 long read assembly where um, we had assembled it with Smart DeNovo polished the contigs with both long read data that went into the original assembly and short read data from the previous assembly. We used a single genetic map from our exome capture array to assign contigs into the bins, uh, followed by ordering and orientation of the contigs within each bin using a high C contact map. In comparison to the previous assembly, there's much more even coverage of even these long repeat regions where the short reads simply don't align due to multi-mapping. Uh, you can also see a nice plot here of the high C contact map showing the contact frequencies along each of the assembled pseudomolecules. Comparing the two side by side, contiguity is vastly improved in the new assembly. Here you can see plots of the short and long read assemblies of chromosome 1, uh, short read on the left and long read on the right, plotted against chromosome 1 of the model legume organism uh, Metacago truncatula. So with a successful approach now, we moved on to lens or voides. With a expected smaller genome size, closer to three gigabases, it actually produced an even better assembly than culinaris, with only slightly over 2,000 contigs and a contig N50 of almost five megabases. We also anchored a greater amount of sequence, 96% of it, into the seven pseudomolecules, and it even had a better BUSCO score, 96% as well. On the right, you can see a simple mummer plot comparing the two de novo assemblies with some amount of structural variation visible even at this uh, high scale overview. So before we had the long read assemblies, we were unable to properly analyze the repetitive content in the culinaris genome simply due to the excessive fragmentation of the repeat regions and collapse sequence. With the long read assemblies, however, we were able to identify 20 kb repeats similar to those previously found in P. Uh, and breaking down repeats by type, we were also able to see that the expansion in genome size from Ervoides to Culinaris is driven almost exclusively by an increase in this repeat type highlighted in the chart below. Uh, we also went in and estimated the insertion times of repeats and used that to basically confirm that the greater proportion of repeat insertions in culinaris are much more recent in comparison compared to ervoides uh, on the plots on the right hand side, culinaris is on the top and ervoides is on the bottom. 
We can also visualize syntony between the genomes, uh, as well as P, closest sequenced relative. Previously, we had known there was a translocation between chromosomes 1 and 5, but we were un unsure if it was reciprocal or not due to the low fidelity in the interspecific genetic map. Uh, but by going in and zooming in on those two chromosomes, as seen below, now we can see that it is reciprocal but uneven. We also have all the sequence around the translocation breakpoint, which enables us to go in and properly characterize that region. Another thing that we can do now that we have more complete reference and access to long read technologies is to go in and examine structural variation within species by aligning long reads to the appropriate reference. Even at five to tenfold coverage, we were able to identify a large number of good quality variants uh, from large indels to breakpoints and duplications. Shown below is a short visualization of validating several deletions common to two of the four genotypes in the plot. Um, at least two of them we would probably have been unable to find with uh, short read data entirely. However, we've also run into complications with the alignment of the reads. Given the intact repeat size within lentil, we find that the shorter reads, and by shorter I mean 5 to 10 kb, they can actually misalign to the much longer repeat structures, creating false positives, which usually show up as false breakpoints. We also find there are regions with very little alignment at all, suggesting either a deletion of that region within that particular line, or simply novel sequence within that region. Shown here are a few examples. Uh, in both views, we have the same set of three different lines aligned to the reference across 116 KB. The bottom, CDC milestone, is more closely related to the reference sequence, which is CDC Redberry, and has more even coverage overall. However, the other two lines have these, have these sections where the issues uh, are as described above that have been highlighted here in red. So after going in and validating some of these structural variants, we also find that there's some interesting relationships between them and some of our genetic maps. In Lentil, we actually find there are a lot of uh, unusual genetic maps with strange characteristics uh, in both inter and even in intra-specific populations. Uh, this example, we're looking here at chromosome 4 in the LR18 population, which is culinaris by culinaris. It's not an interspecific. Um, but it was always missing markers towards the end of the chromosome. And when we go in and examine the long read alignments for the two parental lines, there are actually several major inversions within the problem region. And we go in and comparing this genetic map to where these inversions fall, we can actually see a relationship between fragmented linkage groups that were thrown away in previous maps and these structural variant breakpoints. We also have assemblies of the other species in progress. I'd hope to be able to show a few more complete assemblies, but unfortunately our lab has been shut down due to recent events and sequencing has halted. But we've done some interim assemblies uh, with lower coverage that show that even, we can still obtain some very reasonable numbers. And we're hoping to bump all of these up to a full 50-fold coverage and finish the assemblies once everything opens back up again. Um, below is an example of the sorts of translocations and interesting variation we expect to see. We've actually taken uh, data from a map, gone through and colored the chromosomes of lens lamoti according to what the corresponding chromosome in lens culinaris would be, showing several different intrachromosomal translocations. I'd like to thank everyone who's been involved in genome sequencing from the very start, all the way back to the LenGen project, for all of their help and contributions to the efforts so far. And I'm uh, looking forward to everything else that will come out of these collaborations in the future. Thank you.